And Gendo said, let there be camera. What's going on, guys? It's Gendo here, and welcome to episode 21 of If I Had a Hammer. And this time, from now on, we're going to have a camera here in the bottom left-hand corner, just because it worked so well in the Sheffield FC save that you got to be able to see my true reactions for losing and now, as requested by you, the fans, it is now here in the West Ham save. What? What do you mean it wasn't requested? What do you mean no one watches this? 235 subs. They're all one guy named Jeff? Oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, let's get right into reviewing the matches that took place over the last month. And due to injuries from Jack Butland... Marwan Fellaini and Dimitri Payet, I had to do a little bit of tweaking in terms of the formation. I'll show you exactly what I've been using over the past month, but let's take a look at how we've been doing. As what was said in the last episode, we were taking on Aston Villa next, and we defeated them away from home by the score of 2-1. to one. Martin Odegaard and Yoel Poyampalo, both the goal scorers for the Hammers. Aston Villa getting one back right at the death of the match, but overall we took 17 shots, 9 of them being on target, 63% possession. I'm glad that we were able to actually turn possession into something in this match, and we came away with a very solid victory. Not everybody playing their best. Jack Butland... Uh, with a 6-9, Dimitri Payet with a 6-9, this is of course pre-injury, but overall, the rest of the team, very stellar work to get the victory. The fouls were coming in thick and fast and the blood was spilling in the next match as we took on Millwall in the FA Cup and we defeated them 1-0, very narrowly defeated them off of a Mark Noble penalty in the 68th minute, but just take a look at the stat difference. 19 shots, four of them being on target. Yes, Millwall, just two shots, one of them on target. We had 73% possession. We did not allow Millwall any chance to have the ball, and that's honestly why they were probably fouling us so much. They had five yellow cards, one red card because Luke Britton got sent off in the 81st minute. They didn't finish with 11 men on the pitch, but that didn't matter. We were not giving Millwall a single solitary chance to take advantage of us and to get a shot off. And yeah, we may have only got one goal, but one nil, one nil does the job and that's what gets us on into the fourth round. And it was against this match against Newcastle where we started to see the injuries pile up. We did not have Jack Butlin in that. Carl Darlow was here. We did not have Fellaini anymore. He had a gashed head due to training injuries and Dimitri Pyatt was out due to a uh, busted shoulder also due to training injuries. So we wouldn't have those guys for the next three weeks. And against third place Newcastle, we were able to scrape away with a two-all draw. Jamie Vari getting us two goals in the first half. Newcastle had to fight and claw their way back just to edge out the two goals. Uh, one in the 42nd minute by uh, Tudori, and then Sedu Barahino in the 63rd, nodding the match up. But once again, we completely dominated this match. 16 shots, 7 on target, 71% possession, and that is all due to the formation. The a, a new formation that I'd like to call the V, that I will, I will show you once we get into the match today, and I will give a description in the info box below as to what it is, and how it's all about and how it runs. But here against third place Newcastle coming away with a two all draw, not a bad result. We then followed that up with a two nil victory at home against Stoke with Pedro Obiang and Jamie Vari getting the goals for the Hammers. 14 shots, eight of them on target, 57% possession. Once again, another domination job as we did not allow Stoke a single shot on net. Even though they took eight shots on total, they did not find the mark, most of them being from outside the 18 yard area. Overall, everyone did well. Carl Darlow didn't really have a tough time in that. That's why he was the worst, uh, he was one of the worst players on the pitch with a 6 9. I believe it says Mark Noble, the captain, with a 6 8. He did a rather average job. But overall, the team played very well on a whole and keeping up. Our undefeated streak in the league, I believe at this point in time, we've gone nine matches undefeated. Even though we scrapped to a 1-0 victory over Luton Town, I feel like we played very well. I mean, we had 17 shots, 7 on target, 61% possession of the ball, and Pedro Obiang's goal in the 65th minute being the only difference here. A lot of fouls in this match. I'm surprised there, are not, there were not more cards 
overall six cards but Luton had 27 fouls and we had 18 I'm surprised no one got sent off however overall just taking a look at the ratings people have played very well Reese Burke getting himself his first start in quite a while did okay Sven Bender even though he got a yellow card played okay Yopo Yampalo not a good day up front but everyone else around him is doing very well Charlie Taylor and Sebastian Driussi have been impressing me in recent weeks and they're really starting to give me give me thoughts about starting them more often but overall, nice to get the victory, and we have now moved on into the fifth round where we could possibly take on either Charlton Athletic or Oldham Athletic. The draws are very favorable to us in these early rounds. We could go into the quarterfinals with a victory over one of those two teams. And then the final league match before the transfer window roundup, we defeated relegation side Cardiff City by the score of 4-0 away from home. It was the Andre Zivkovic show as he netted himself a hat trick. Jamie Vardy also getting in on the act in the 24th minute. But overall, 16 shots, 10 of them on target. We surprisingly had less possession of the ball, but most of the time it was us, you know, taking the shots on net, putting the ball into the back of the net, Cardiff picking the ball up. That was where most of their possession came from, picking the ball out of the back of the nets and restarting the match. But overall, can't fault anybody here. Yeah, we had the three goals from Zipkovic, but then uh, Payet, Vardy, Fellaini, Obiang, all getting in on the assist. It was a complete team effort, and against a relegation side like Cardiff, you really have to put forth the effort, and you got to, to come away with victories like this. It just proves that, you know, you have the talent against smaller teams now try and put that talent against the bigger teams can we get these four nil results hell can we even get one nil results against teams like arsenal man city man U? it's been done but can we do it on a consistent basis right so here's the run of form that we've had we have not lost in any competition since all the way back here on the 4th of November and it was the 2-0 loss to Chelsea since then we've only we've only gone and won a quite a few games I don't even remember how many matches we've won or drawn but overall just going undefeated in the league up to this point for I believe that's about a two-month stretch of being undefeated in all competitions is quite an amazing feat. And in the Premier League, we are currently sitting in fifth place now due to that run of form. 46 points through 24 matches. We have at least one game in hand on all on all of the teams around us. So we could possibly jump. We can possibly jump Chelsea after this match, but you know, take a look at that. Man City up top with 55, Manchester United with 51, Liverpool 49, Chelsea 47. If we get two wins, two back-to-back -back wins, that's six points that puts us on 52. We could possibly move up into second, even though that's not likely. We would probably move up into third, if not, you know, just one spot into fourth. But overall, we are doing very well, and it is all due to this formation that I am currently using. Now, I gotta say, I did not make this myself, but it is a very solid formation, and if you want to know more about this, link in the description below is called the Tian Sha All Under Heaven Formation. It is a 4-5-1, and it is all based around possession, as well as getting the ball into the 18-yard box, and mostly confusing the back line and confusing the goalkeeper. A lot of crosses to the far post. A lot of telling the center mids and the wingers not to shoot. Basically throw it through um, the striker up front. I have it set to a defensive four because Jamie Vardy is a defensive four. Even though in the main formation that is set up, the user has it as a false nine. So a little bit of, of tactical tweaking on my side just because I need to fit it towards the players that I play in my style. And you can take a you can take a look at it. you can see if it's a, a system for you and you know tweak it up however you want. He only puts out as a base, and as you can see, I've made a couple of tweaks myself. But like I said, once again, link in the description for this formation called Tian Sha All Under Heaven. Now, before we get into the Southampton match, it's the third of February. Transfer window is closed. Let's take a look at what kind of deals we've made. 
Now, when you take a look at this transfer list, you will notice that there's only one new name on either side. The first one on the outs, Christopher Samba, has been sold to Swansea for 525,000 pounds. Kind of, they kind of lowballed him, but I wasn't really seeing him to be of any more use at our side, especially since I'm trying to develop Reese Burke and Reese Oxford to come through and you know, take over that side. I want to try and get younger. Christopher Sama being 33 years old, he, is, he was the oldest center back on the roster, and I felt like that he was only going to get slower, start to get slower and slower as he aged. So I felt it the right time to sell him, and Swansea were the ones that bid on him. So he's gone to Swansea. Good luck with him as I try to develop the youth players on my side. Now, on the players that are coming in, only one player has come in during this transfer window, and he was found by my head of youth development. His name is Gino Negro, and yes, that is his real name. He's come in from the Serie D side in Italy called Monopoly. We bought him for 65,000 pounds. He's a 17-year-old center attacking mid. And to be quite honest with you, he doesn't look all that bad. Just take a look. 20 determination, 15 flair, some of the stats that you know pop out at me. Uh, 16 technique, 15 first touch. He's good in the speed department, not so much in the rest of the physicality. I mean, yeah, he has an 11 pace, 13 acceleration, but at least there's 10s in there. And 10, 10 is pretty much you know the average. But for a 17-year-old, doesn't look all that bad. As far as other stats for center attacking mid, I'm going to try and play him as more of an advanced playmaker. So all the blues in here are the stats that I'm looking for. So 12 in dribbling, 11 in passing. He's got decent vision with 12 there, 12 decision making. And yes, I understand he's, he's not going to be implemented into the team right away. That's why he's going to be training with the youths. I'm not going to try and loan him out too much. I want to try and get him used to the squad here. But 17-year-old Gino Negro, welcome to the club. Hopefully, I can utilize him in a few years' time. And this is the lineup that we're going to go with. We still have Jack Butland out with injury, so Carl Darlow is once again going to take over the keeping of the Nets. And he hasn't done that bad in his four spots, in his four game appearances in the league um, over this last stretch. So might as well go with the hot hand, keep him out there. Uh, along the back line, we're going to have Cresswell, Burke, Subotic, and Byram. Sven Bender as our defensive mid. Mark Noble and Pedro Obiang as the two center mids. Driussi and Zivkovic out on the wings. I'm giving Payet a little bit of a rest, you know, to come back into full fitness. And then Jamie Vardy being the lone striker up top. Let's keep this, uh, this nice winning run going. And against a team like Southampton, a draw is the bare minimum. I mean, we need to come up with some sort of result versus this team. So let's kick off and see what happens. Well, it's nice to see that Southampton are rocking the lime greens today. Nathan Redmond out there. Sidibe trying to get a long cross in, but it's cut out. Um, well, not well enough. Rodriguez. I don't know which Rodriguez boy that is. Oh, what a clearance away. But Southampton still with the ball, still coming forward with it. We're doing very well to cut out some of their attack. Not all of it, though. Long ball into the box. Tried to find the head of Christian Benteke, who is on Southampton. Don't ask me. Uh, also saw Wilfred Bonnie in there. I don't know how they picked him up either. But here we go on the counterattack. Driussi trying to find Jamie Vardy. Slots it through. But what a save from Zoe. Throw in for Southampton, uh, Victor Wanyama out to James Ward-Prowse, who takes a shot to Benteke. Benteke, the wide open net. Carl Darlow with a fine save the first time through, but then Christian Benteke was there for the rebound and the wide open net. Southampton won, West Ham nil. And we did all we could. I mean, what a long, long shot from James Ward-Prowse from about 25 yards out. It was a decent save from Darlow, but Benteke cannot miss from there, and he doesn't. So we come to halftime. It's a 1-0 you know, deficit at this point in time. And overall, the players, once again, playing average, and I've said this before time and time again, playing average is not always going to garner the results. And clearly right here, Southampton are playing better than us. Average will not do. We need to find some way to turn this around. 
Um, I don't know if I should bring anybody on. I mean, Pedro Obiang's got a yellow card. He's also played the worst. I'm going to keep him out there just for a little while longer to see if he can turn it around, help get a goal, uh, or create a chances for a goal. But let's take a look at the analysis and see how Southampton are beating us. Right, so it looks like they're trying to come up the left side. As you can see, a lot of key passes just stuck around here in this left corner. And I see 21, 10, and 9 as the main contributors of key passes. So uh, Jay Rodriguez, I saw Wilfred Bonnie in there, and then number 21, Ryan Bertrand. So I'm going to do well to close them out and hopefully neutralize them while at the same time try and give us a little bit of an attacking chance to get back in this match, score a goal, because we need a draw from this at the very least. All right, 55 minutes on, and we're slotting it through. Zivkovic, can he find anybody? He's going to take a shot. He does. Driussi! Wow, two straight shots. The keeper spilled them both, and we get a corner out of it. Thought for sure we would have gotten a goal, but in the end, doesn't lead to anything. Driussi with the ball, though. Can he make something happen here? No, he's taken off by Jay Rodriguez. 67 minutes gone, and Southampton coming forward. Cresswell trying to jockey Redmond. What? Oh, my God. What a cross in to Afobe, and Afobe doubles the lead of Southampton. What? That was a rifle cross. That was a laser precision cross. The defense couldn't react to that, and Darlow's not catching that. It's 2-0 Southampton. Southampton, we're coming for it once again, but a long pass out to pay it. Can we hit him on a counter here? Can we break through? Polian Powell to Fellaini to Zivkovic. Good movement, but the ball goes over the crossbar. We've done a decent enough job to hold on to the ball. We've had 60% possession, 11 shots, three of them on target. But now, as you can see, all the yellow cards coming in, all the fouls coming out, out of frustration, I'm sure. We bossed this match, but Southampton continued to hit us on a counter. And at the end of the day, the counter attack worked very well against us. Thought for sure we would have kept this run going, but in the end, we are shut out for the first time in two months. We have not, not only do we not score a goal, but not get any sort of result as Southampton are going to come away here victors as the, the ref's gone well beyond the two minutes of stoppage time they should have given. Skied by Christian Benteke, and there's the full-time whistle. Southampton 2, West Ham 0. Our first defeat in two months, which, looking back, isn't all that bad, but at the same time, it's really frustrating because I thought for sure we would have gotten something versus Southampton and continued our, our winning ways, or at least our non-defeated ways, but... That changes now. I mean, just take a look at that. 12 shots, only three of them on targets. And that's not how this formation works. This formation is all about getting the ball in front of the nets and, you know, giving the chances, putting the ball on nets, forcing the goalkeeper to into an error, into a mistake that'll allow us to get a goal. And we had 60% possession too, but, oh, the sheer amount of fouls, 29 fouls, that's, that's no good. We need to we need to come back. We need to regroup. I mean, we didn't drop. Uh, we're still uh, we still have a game in hand on. I want to say half the teams on in the league. Uh, we have a game in hand on Chelsea, on Tottenham. So in the next match, if we can come away with the victory, we could bump back up. We could bump up. Excuse me, into fourth place. And you know, European qualification, European spots right now is really. All I care about, and sitting in fifth place, obviously that will put us in a European spot. I would love to. I'd love to go into um, Champions League spots if I can't help it. But, you know, if we keep on playing like this, if we, you know, keep dropping stupid matches like this against teams like Southampton, uh, Champions League is not a, not a reasonable Feet. It could come down to European qualifications. But let's take a look at the schedule over the next month plus and we'll see um, how we could possibly fare. Could we stay in this spot? And this is what the schedule is going to look like. Actually, let's get the full rest of the season in there. Our very next match is against Bournemouth in three days' time. They're saying in 15th we should come away with a win there. Spurs, 
Big Derby. I'd love to try and pull a draw at the very least on them. Then the FA Cup with between either Oldham and Leicester. Excuse me, I thought Charlton was in that. But between Oldham or Leicester will be our fifth round match. Then we have Liverpool, Sunderland, both away. Then Manchester City and Chelsea, both home. I want to come back and say I want to come back versus another London Derby. I want to break my curse of London derbies against the top teams in London. So I want to come back because Crystal Palace doesn't really you know, fit the bill. I want to try and get a win versus Spurs, versus Arsenal, versus Chelsea. And, well, we could, we could possibly get a win versus Tottenham. But next time, next episode, it will be versus Chelsea. Cross fingers. Hopefully we stay in the continental placements. Uh, through this next run of form. So until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and you want to see new FM content on the channel. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else, please leave in the comment box down below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.